Praise the Lord and welcome to Western Boulevard Presbyterian Church. We're excited to have you join us on this special Sunday. It's Confirmation Sunday here. We are celebrating our newly confirmed members of the church. Uh, we'd like to take this opportunity, first of all, to welcome our visitors. If you're visiting us today virtually, we're so glad that you've joined us. We want you to know that we are looking forward to meeting you face to face. As soon as we go beyond our social distancing, we will gladly receive you here at 4900 Kaplan Drive in the beautiful city of Raleigh, North Carolina. As I just mentioned, we're celebrating Confirmation Sunday on Thursday, June the 11th at 7 p.m. The seven candidates for confirmation were examined by Western Boulevard Presbyterian Church's session, and it gives me great pleasure and a true honor to inform you that all of them did an excellent job and they were approved. Praise God for these young followers of Jesus Christ. Our new confirmands are as follows. William Atwell Fisher, Lily Elizabeth Fleming, Olivia Brooks Holt, Oliver Jude Milchuk, Lydia Hester Smith, Jessup Michael Whitehurst, William Clifford Winslow. Let's give them a round of applause. They have worked so hard. They have been with me in study for three months, primarily mostly on Zoom. We started face to face, but uh, they were great troopers when COVID-19 hit. They picked up without a beat in our Zoom gatherings, and it's just been a joy and honor and a pleasure to work with them and to see the light of Christ, to see how God's presence is at work in our young people. So congratulations, many blessings to you. The session will be meeting tonight via Zoom at 7.30 p.m. As you know, we have a Wednesday night prayer service every Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. If you'd like to include a prayer request, see my email on the bulletin. Friendly reminder that we are still, we, the country of the United States of America, are still dealing with the spread of COVID-19. So please wear your mask and gloves when you're in public. Wash your hands frequently. If you are sick, stay home. Apply extra precaution if you are a high risk individual. And please do everything you can to stay safe. Pray for our church, pray for this country, pray for the world. There's so much happening that we need prayer. Uh, a few other prayer concerns. Continue to pray for Holly Webster, who is asking God for renewed strength. You know that she has had a couple of medical matters uh, to attend, and she just needs God to not only hear her, heal her, but to strengthen her as she continues to heal. We want to keep Nicholas Maloma in our prayers. Uh, we want to keep his family in our prayers. We want to pray for our friend Claudia, whose mother died. Uh, Claudia has a major court date coming up this month in June. We're not sure of the date, but we want to pray for her that it would all go well and in her favor. Just another friendly set of reminders, everybody in the church, especially those who are officers and members of committees, please communicate. Communicate more now than you've done ever before. Phone, email, Zoom. We need to continue to have our committee meetings. So please keep up your committee meetings. Don't miss them. Do everything you can because it's, it's, pri it's the primary way we're able to stay together and stay connected. Um, and as I said earlier, just continue to pray for us as we walk together, as we help and reach out to our community and our world to bring the love, the joy, the hope and the peace and justice of Jesus Christ to the world. I invite you to join me for our call to worship, which is found in your bulletin. Through every age, 
Christ calls disciples to follow him. And where is it that we go with Christ? Christ leads us among enemies and strangers, causing us to regard all persons as potential friends. Christ leads us into uncharted places of spiritual wilderness where the presence of the Spirit will lead us. Christ leads us to love ourselves so we might be found, so grace might become real. We gather to worship the Christ who leads. May we gain the wisdom and courage to follow. Our opening song, Lord, I Want to Be a Christian, which is led by Elizabeth Davis. How many times, how many times have we failed the Lord? Too many to count. The good news is that God never gives up on us. In fact, God calls us even in our failures to, to repent, to confess. So join me in this prayer of confession. Creator God, by your design, we are whole people. Yet we deny this gift of wholeness when we have been willing to be entertained but not changed. We have allowed our insights to harden into cliches. We have seen our youth as the future of the church, but not as valuable members of the church today. We have called on you only to hear the sound of our own voices. Forgiving God, who makes community from the raw materials of our lives. Teach us the humility to learn from those who know a true rejoicing. Restore to us wholeness through the oneness we have in your Son, our risen Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. In the name that is above every name, in the name that is above every sin, in the name of Jesus. We are forgiven. We have peace with God and peace with our neighbors and peace with ourselves. So turn to your neighbor, look them in the eye and proclaim the peace of Christ be with you. Today's New Testament lesson comes from the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 22, verses 15 through 22. Listen to the Word of God. Then the Pharisees went and plotted to entrap him in what he said. So they sent their disciples to him along with the Herodians, saying, Teacher, we know that you are sincere, and teach the way of God in accordance with truth, and show deference to no one. For you do not regard people with partiality. Tell us, then, what you think. 
Is it lawful to pay taxes to the emperor or not? But Jesus, aware of their malice, said, Why are you putting me to the test, you hypocrites? Show me the coin used for the tax. And they brought him a denarius. Then he said to them, Whose head is this and whose title? They answered, The emperor's. Then he said to them, Give therefore to the emperor the things that are the emperor's, and to God the things that are God's. When they heard this, they were amazed, and they left him and went away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I invite you to consider for our topic today, given to God what belongs to God. Given to God what belongs to God. After three months of meeting every Sunday, with the exception of Mother's Day and Easter, with our confirmands, I can truly say that we have learned more about Jesus, more about ourselves, and more about the church and the world that we live in. As we have grown together, as we've walked and journeyed together, I've learned a little more about them as individuals, and they've learned about me. They have uh, poured out themselves uh, to prepare for this moment. Um, and I reflected on that, and I reflected, reflected some of what's happening in their own spiritual maturity and their faith journey. And I came to this text coming from the Gospel of Matthew chapter 22. In this text, we hear Jesus and the Pharisees having a discussion. They're having a conversation. They're kind of debating. They're debating on how to be some, someone who has faith in God, how to be someone who has faith in God, and how to be someone who lives in the world, in a world full of political and economic powers. How to be a person who lives in a world that is full of political and economic powers. That, I think, is a real big theme that all of us can connect with. You know, the whole issue of where our allegiances lie. Now, it is quite easy especially on a Confirmation Sunday or on any Sunday that we're in church, any moment we're in church, to give the good answer, well, my allegiance is to the Lord or my allegiance is to the church. We've been, if you're studying these texts in the New Testament, we've been very familiar with Jesus' teaching alongside our understanding of human desire for control, the desire for power, the desire to be popular, the desire to be cool, the desire to be in, or to get enough hits on TikTok to boast to your friends. We're familiar with those things and how Jesus speaks to some of that. And it would seem at this point, as we're celebrating confirmation, that we would celebrate some kind of choice, the choice that these young, me, these young men and young women are making as confirmands to be an adult Christian. And don't get me wrong, it is certainly something of a maturing faith to stand, even though it's virtual, I know that you are not looking at our confirmands physically, but you're gonna see images of them virtually, but it takes adult faith or maturing faith to stand up publicly, even virtually, and say, put a stake in the ground. This is what I believe. This is who I am. And this is who my allegiance is to. And that's in some way what this text makes us think about. It makes us think about this aspect of confirmation that is somewhat of making a decision and, and maturing and stepping forward. So confirmands, I think it's important for us to recognize what you have just done. You've been bold, you've been persistent, you've been brave to talk about your faith and to do it in front of the session, 
which I find sometimes intimidating. But not only have you done it, but you have shared your faith statements and you have worked and labor, labored over thinking about what it is that you do believe. Studying the scriptures, studying lessons, learning what Gerard would say when he asked the pastor. Yeah, you've done all of that and we applaud you. We applaud you because we know that some of your peers were out playing football. Some of your peers were probably taking an afternoon snooze. Some of your friends were probably saying, mm, I'm sure glad I don't have to go to confirmation. I'm just taking it easy. It's Sunday, a day for me to rest. Your bravery over the past three months, but not only the past three months, in the weeks, months, and years ahead, serve as an example to the rest of us. Yes, you all are examples of us. You're reminding us that we need to be fervent, committed, persistent, consistent, intentional about our faith. And we are all so proud, so proud to see you standing among us, even virtually, sharing your faith. But honestly, in this moment, there is something else that comes to mind also. I mean, if we're really honest as older Christians, and I do mean the adults, perhaps your parents, your aunts, uncles, or just the adults in the church, the Christian faith is a journey. And it will, all, it will not always be a mountaintop experience. In some ways, this Sunday morning text makes us think about the options, the other things that pull us from the world to perhaps another allegiance, to another loyalty, to another commitment. The things that we talked about in our confirmation studies were about God's love, God's grace, about God's sovereignty, about forgiveness, about Jesus Christ, about the Bible and how Jesus is the word of God that became flesh. Those things are not always talked about when you're outside of confirmation and outside of your church family. I mean, perhaps you're in a situation at home where your mom or your dad or your grandparents or someone continues to keep that conversation going. But sometimes that kind of conversation becomes rather not so often rare. And it begins to be a competition within yourself. Well, where will my focus be? And when will I have these kind of conversations? And was all that study just so that I could be confirmed and just move on in life, kind of graduate from church? I hope not. I hope not. Even though the lessons that we used in confirmation helped us to learn so much about our faith and about Jesus Christ, and about our church and our history. This is just the beginning. This is just a, a phase, if you will, to lead you hopefully into a, a continued journey in life, walking with Jesus and walking with the people of God. Now, I know some of you in just a few years will graduate from high school like so many are graduating today and you will be leaving home perhaps you will stay home but you will have other attention grabbers you will probably have a part-time job you you may be in college you may be in the military you may be doing something that none of us imagine And in those times, as you're getting older and as you're moving and exploring out into the world, your attention will be challenged. It will be pulled in different directions. 
This leads me to the debate that Jesus talks about here in our text this morning. The debate that Jesus has today is about the emperor on the coin, giving to God what is God's and giving to Caesar what is Caesar. That's not an easy task. It's not easy when you know that there is a big party going on and uh, the party is going to stay from, I don't know, nine o'clock at night until the wee hours of the morning. It's not easy to say, well, I'm going to get in so that I can get up and go to church on Sunday morning. It's not easy when you are away from home and perhaps in college and um, no one is really I shouldn't say no one, but few people are really talking about uh, going to a Bible study or doing service in the community or participating in a missions where your service to others who are in need will be uh, some sort of uh, representation of Christ's presence in the world. It's not easy when you are um, growing older and your responsibilities increase and your time seems to shrink to invest, you know, what might be your precious moments into the service of God, into the times of uh, sitting still and seeking God. Giving to God what is God's sounds nice. It sounds real nice. But let me tell you, giving to Caesar what is Caesar is a lot of fun. That's the truth. And here's the thing about the church. If you're trying to separate giving to God what is God's and giving to Caesar what is Caesar, if, you look, if you're looking for great music, the radio will always have something that sounds better. If you're looking for an entertaining Message, TED Talk, TV, and movies will outdo Pastor Bruce any day. If you're looking for food that tastes better than bread and wine, I know that there's Ray's, uh, there's the Oak City fish and chips, uh, there's Applebee's, and if you really want to be honest, there's also Bojangles and the cookout. You're going to find something that tastes better than the bread and, and wine that you have at communion. And if you're looking for fun youth events, if you're looking for fun activities, the YMCA, Lifetime Fitness, the mall once this COVID-19 is over, and most of our community groups can do more than what the church does. That's simply the truth. The church isn't as cool as the world. Caesar's stuff is pretty fun and entertaining. And if you think coming to church is something that you simply should do, then guilt won't be enough to get you out of bed on Sunday mornings to keep coming. In some sense, our responsibility is to help build and shape you and strengthen you so that you grow in faith and continue to seek God on your own. And so what does the church have to offer? What would make you want to come instead of feeling you should come? Remember Jesus talking about Caesar and God on that coin. When the Pharisees asked Jesus about paying taxes, with Roman coins, he asked for a coin because its picture of Caesar was on the coin. And you could read, if you read back then, Caesar God. The Romans thought that the emperor was God. And so when Jesus said, give to Caesar what is Caesar's and give to God what is God's, he wasn't really talking about the choice between God and the world in a way similar that I was just describing. Caesar and Caesar's image on the coin 
represents our desire for control, our desire to be hip, our desire to be cool, our desire to be popular, our desire to have all the friends attention, our desire to, to define our own life and to define where God fits and to define how much power God gets. Jesus is reminding us, he's reminding you and me that this is not true. Jesus is telling us in this gospel lesson, Jesus is saying that we, all, we don't always get to decide who we are. We don't. Nor do we get to say who God is. The world Things like school, sports, shopping, TV, dance, TikTok, gaming, things like power, money, security, you know, control, being with the in crowd. These things are trying to tell us that we get to decide who we are. Trust me. Trust Jesus. That's far from the truth. Remember the lessons that we have studied and you've heard from Sunday school and vacation Bible school that tells us, that tells you and me that we don't get to decide who God is. And we don't get to fully decide who we are, not as disciples. You remember how Jesus came to the woman at the well and the woman at the well tried to put up a front and pretend that she was doing fine and that everything in her life was in order and that she just had it going on. And then Jesus began to tell her lovingly, tell her, your life is messed up. You've got some real issues. And in the course of that conversation, she was able to sense and to see that Jesus was actually telling her the truth and that this was not something ordinary, but it was extraordinary from God. Similarly, when Jesus encounters James and John, the sons of Zebedee, before they became disciples, Jesus comes to them and they're deep into an entrepreneurial venture. They are fishermen. They own a chain of red lobsters and they have been working this chain and making the money from their restaurant and their fishery for many years. But Jesus comes to them and says, follow me, follow me and I will make you fishers of people. Follow me and I'll make you into something greater than you could ever imagine. Follow me and I will take you into your true destiny. We don't decide who we are and we do not define who God is, but God comes to us through Jesus Christ and reveals to us who we are. God comes to us through Jesus Christ and reveals to you and to me who God truly is. In church, we hear what God has done for us. We hear how Jesus is working in our lives. And we are promised that when we fail, when we are broken and suffering, when our life is messed up from the floor up and no one else can fix it, God is standing with us and God promises never to leave us, never to turn his back on us, never to throw us out and betray us, God promises that God will uphold us. So my friends, not just my confirmands, but my friends, today you have given us an opportunity to see Christ at work in you. You've given yourselves an opportunity to claim what God says about you. You've been bold, you've been brave, you've been persistent, and we are so proud of you. 
And while I'm reminded that you are maturing and growing older, not just in terms of your faith, but in every way, I look at some of you and think, whoa, what happened? <laughs> You're grown. Don't forget. Don't forget that you belong to God. Don't forget that God has from time to time revealed God's self to you. It may have been at Lake Susan at Montreat. It may have been in a mission trip down in New Orleans. It may have been in a gathering right here in worship or in a, a youth fellowship in the afternoon, but God has revealed God's self to you. You hold on to that and you hold on to the things that Jesus has taught you through the word. And you walk forward from this point claiming that you are who God says you are. You are a child of the Most High. You are light in this world. You are salt. That you are the promises. You're, you're a recipient of the promises of new life. And when all those Caesar things, those world things, fail to turn you into the things that they say they will turn you into, you stand boldly and you proclaim that I am a child of God through Christ Jesus. And God will always tell you, yes, that's precisely who you are. Give to God what belongs to God. My life, my soul, my all. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. Today, somebody is listening, somebody is watching, and somebody is saying, I've never given my all. I've only given part. And I realize that that is not what God wants. God wants A-L-L. -L. God wants your all. God wants you all so that God can transform you into the person that you were created to be. God loves you so much that he sent Jesus Christ, his only begotten son, for you, for me, for the whole world. And if you would just trust, trust in this one Jesus that was sent by God, Trust him and ask him to lead you. Trust him and ask him to forgive you. Surrender your all to him, your life. God will turn your life into something great and beautiful. Just pray, say, Lord, I know that I am messed up. And I have strayed from you. I've gone my own way. I've tried to do it on my own. And I believe that your son, Jesus, the one who died on the cross for the sins of the world and was raised on the third day, I believe that your son, Jesus, actually cares for me. And I give myself, I give myself over to you. And I ask that you come into my heart and take control of my life. Jesus, that you would be my Lord and my all, my Savior. If you do that, or if you've done that, let me know. You can email me, bgrady9039 at gmail.com. Today, for the affirmation of faith, we have decided to provide you with a special presentation 
that comes from the hearts of our confirmants. So listen and watch and enjoy. We enter into this service of confirmation, recognizing that confirmation is an important marker along our spiritual journey. At baptism, we are initiated into the new covenant in Jesus Christ and membership into the church, Christ's body in the world. For many of us, this happens when we are very young, perhaps while we were babies. We recognize that children are members of their human families, but no one expects children to do dishes and take out the trash and do laundry. In the same way, baptized infants are members of the church, the family of faith, but are not yet capable of sharing everything involved in membership. Confirmation is an opportunity to respond to the grace of God through Christ Jesus, Jesus available to us as acknowledged in baptism and to promise to live as a person who follows Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. What God offers us has to be accepted in repentance and faith. Confirmation is our response of commitment. It's our profession of faith. It's a rededication that says, yes, Jesus, I will follow you. The following names are the confirmands for Western Boulevard Presbyterian Church. William Atwell Fisher, Lily Elizabeth Fleming, Olivia Brooks Holt, Oliver Jude Milchuk, Lydia Hester Smith, Jessup Michael Whitehurst, William Clifford Winslow. Let us prepare ourselves for this special affirmation of faith. I believe Jesus was born the Virgin Mary, preached God's word, and sacrificed his life on the cross. The resurrection of Jesus shows us that he has cleansed us of our sins, helps us in our daily lives, and provides us with hope of our own resurrection. I believe that Jesus died on the cross to forgive our sins and that I should live a life through God. I believe that I should love my neighbor as I love God and I love myself. I believe that God is powerful and loving, always with our best interest in heart. God guides us and protects us. God loves us so much that he sent his son Jesus in his image to sacrifice himself on the cross for our sins. I believe in God the Father, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I believe that God can help me through anything, no matter the situation, and that Jesus died on the cross for our sins. I believe that the Bible is the truth and God's word. I believe that God watches over us and that he is almighty. I believe that Jesus is God's son. I believe in God, the Father, who created the heavens and earth and all living creatures, and Jesus, the Son, who is our Savior. I believe that God is there for us wherever we go and whenever we need him most in the form of the Holy Ghost. Jesus is always listening to our prayers and answering them but not always in the way you want them to be answered. I've learned that through this pandemic and confirmation class. Right now, things in life are uncertain, but our trust in the Lord shouldn't be. I believe in heaven and hell. I believe that Jesus died on the cross and he came back and God took him to heaven. I believe he knows our deepest desires and understands us better than anyone. I believe our church leaders can broaden my faith and teach me the ways of God. 
the resurrection of Jesus shows us that he has cleansed us of our sins, helps us in our daily lives, and provides us with hope of our own resurrection. I know that God will always be with me, and I will live with his love, mercy, and prosperity as a child of him. I believe that God put me into the world, and he waits for me in heaven. He has taught us to love our neighbor, and he has saved us from ourselves. Through Jesus, who was crucified and died on the cross, he has saved us from sin, from ourselves. We have been saved from things we do to ourselves that damage our relationship with God. I believe he knows our deepest desires and understands us better than anyone. I believe that Jesus came back from the dead to continue spreading the word of God. I can depend on the members of our church to help me grow in my faith and answer questions when I have them. I am How I am living a life through God is going to church, praying, and helping those in need. As people, we do not always live the way God wants us to live, but God will always give us another chance through forgiveness. I believe that God is my Father and He loves me no matter what. I believe that God's grace is given, not earned. That was beautiful, wasn't it? And so now I prepare to raise the confirmation questions. Lydia Hester Smith, Olivia Brooks Holt, Jessup Michael Whitehurst, William Atwell Fisher, Oliver Jude Milchuk, Lily Elizabeth Fleming, and William Clifford Winslow. Please respond to the questions of confirmation. Do you profess your faith in Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? I do with God's help. I do with God's help. Do you renounce evil and affirm your reliance on God's grace? I do. As you continue along your journey of faith, will you do your best to participate actively and responsibly in the worship and mission of Jesus Christ, being a faithful member of his church? Will you use your God-given gifts to make a difference in God's world? I will. I will. God's help. Amen. Amen. God bless you, keep you, and continue to guide you. Confirmands, if your parents, grandparents, older brothers or sisters are there, I would like for them to join you, to come around you as I pray for you and lift this blessing to you. I would rather that we were face to face, but we are celebrating nonetheless virtually. Oh Lord, these young women and men have stepped forward to say yes they desire to continue in their walk of faith, to surrender their lives, their talents, their abilities. They're all to you. Guide them and bless them. Lead them and light the way. Give them courage and strength for the journey. May the Lord bless you and keep you Remember, you are God's beloved. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord give you comfort and peace. Remember, you are Christ's own. May the Lord challenge and convict you, guard and guide you through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At this time, we prepare to present our tithes and offerings. When I walk through deep waters, 
I know that you will be with me when I'm standing in the fire I will not be overcome through the valley of the shadow I will not breaking through the dark night will not overtake me I am pressing into you Lord you fight my every battle and I will not fear I am not alone Let us pray. Lord, thank you for these gifts. Thank you for the tithes and offering. Multiply them, bless them, use them for the upbuilding of your kingdom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It's prayer time. We need prayer. I would like to pray with you. And I'm asking that you would be at one with me, with one another in the Lord. Let us pray. Loving God, you have made all races and nations to be one family. And you sent Jesus Christ to proclaim the good news of salvation to all people. Pour out your spirit on the whole creation and hasten the coming of your reign of justice and love among the nations of the world. God of love, grant our prayer. Let us remember with thanksgiving before you, O Lord, those who have died in Christ and those whose faith is known to you alone. Let us pray that God may be glorified in all the saints. Life-giving life God, 
We give you thanks and praise for the wonderful grace and love declared in all your saints. Grant to us and to all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, a share in the fullness of your joy. God of love, grant our prayer. Let us give thanks for all God's goodness. You are worthy, O oh God, to receive honor and blessing and praise. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love now and forever. Amen. And now we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Once again, this has been a glorious moment to celebrate Christ and to celebrate the confirmation of these young people. We are so proud and we know that God, is, God, God has great plans for you. So I close with this charge and benediction. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and the length and the height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we can ask or think according to the power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn is I Have Decided to Follow Jesus. <laughs>